Okay, YouTubers, I've got a little bit of an update. We're going to change directions on which case I'm going to use for my Turbo 400 bill. So I had this uh, 1969 Turbo 400 core that I had purchased a few a couple of years ago, I think. When I pulled the pan off. Anything metal in the pan was completely rusted. So basically what I've been doing is trying to clean this case up enough where I feel comfortable using it for the build. I have the case itself super clean. I do have a few areas of concern inside the mate, whatever they call this portion. I've heard people refer to it as the maze or something to that effect. But down inside of some of these areas, mostly, you'll see this one, and I think this one, there's a, still a lot of like residual rust, but I've tried two separate different chemical washes of pressure wash it, a car wash. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to go through it with brushes and Q-tips, I guess, to make sure it's a 100% clean. The plan is to move forward with this 1969 truck turbo 400 case and use all the innards from my 1970 Pontiac Grand Prix Turbo 400. Just wanted to throw a video together for you. I've got updates on my transmission. I want to update the uh, transmission fixture for the engine stand. I would say I have maybe a quarter to a third of the parts ordered for the Turbo 400 uh, heavy duty high horsepower rebuild. I'm still kind of making my mind up which vendor I want to use for my clutches and steels. Um, I'll go over here in a minute my intentions or my plans for that build. But let me show you this case set up on the engine stand with the new fixture. Okay guys, I grabbed the fixture off the shelf. So basically what I did was had gave it to a friend of mine and have him weld all the threaded joints so that these can't come unscrewed. The only problem I had with my test run with a fully weighted, fully built transmission was that under full load, full weight, it, I think it was this side, it, if you tried to turn the transmission from horizontal to, ver horizontal to vertical, it just couldn't stay together. So I was like, okay, I give up. I don't feel like messing with this anymore. So I just called uh, Jordan and was like, hey, can you weld all these up for me and try to keep it from coming undone? So basically he just hit every joint on this fixture so it doesn't come undone anymore. Did some work on this side of the fixture where I can actually put it on by hand now where before I couldn't turn that bolt by hand, which was not very convenient. Plus this kind of keeps me from over tightening the fixture because basically I just grab it wiggle it and get it all the slack worked out of it so that way there's absolutely no chance of hurting the case then I run this second nut down just it just kind of acts as a stop it basically just kind of keeps it from wobbling in the fixture and you can adjust this bolt to kind of adjust your horizontal and vertical positioning okay guys there's the uh case mounted up into the fixture setting in the engine stand um, you can see the updated pipe design using the two inch by 18 inch long uh, thick wall uh, i just I call that black iron pipe you can buy at lowe's home depot menards any kind of home improvement store and then you can also see where the three quarter inch pipe and all the adapters have been welded so that they can't come unscrewed I apologize to everyone because my true intent was to build this weld free. I just got irritated with it taking too long and I needed to get something put together. So I'm happy with the final product, but I did have it welded. Okay, there's a good shot of the insides of the 1969 Chevy Turbo 400 case. Like I said, I've been cleaning on it a lot because it was super dirty. What do is it allows you to work on the case in either this vertical position like this, get it set, and if it's not as flat as you want it, you adjust this bolt on the backbone 
to get it as flat as you might need it to do your valve body work. Something else that's handy is you can put it in a vertical position this way and you can actually use it for assembly. Now you've got it in the upright position. For you guys to see what I was talking about as far as being able to rotate the transmission 360 degrees. I just want to get something put together that I can enjoy. So my, my mindset is build it stronger than you think it needs to be and hopefully it'll last. So that's what we're doing and do all the uh, Jake Shore. I'm trying to uh, follow the recipe to build a 1,000 horsepower turbo 400. This is the innards, the main innards out of the Pontiac 1970 turbo 400. Um, it as well as the 69 has the 8 bolt pump which apparently is supposed to be preferred or better for higher horsepower builds. It does have the smooth um, drum or carrier or whatever they call that for the direct so i can run the 34 element sprag with it with no no concerns uh everything in there looked really good nice and clean Double 400s already have an issue where when you drop it from neutral or park into a, a forward gear it, it tries to clunk so if you have your intermediate clutch pack all set with no wave plate it's going to clunk even harder I'm going to rollerize the case. In this case, I'm going to be ordering a heavy duty rear case bushing that is slightly longer. You purposely leave enough of it hanging out inside the case to locate a Torrington roller bearing from a Turbo 350 pump. Hey guys, check out this website. It's got the recipe for building a really strong turbo 400 transmission, including the dual feed for the direct clutches. I apologize, I had to end this video in this type of fashion, but a lot of my footage was corrupt and had a lot of dog barking in the background. If you'll look on that website, it'll systematically take you through, I believe it's a Jake Shore turbo 400 build different modifications and upgrades you can do to the transmission to make it stronger and make it handle more horsepower. Um, I'm following this recipe very closely on my build. Um, the only thing I'm not able to upgrade is the reaction carrier that receives a sprag element instead of the roller clutch because I haven't been able to find one. So, ending the video here. Thanks for watching.